Hey YouTube, Aiden here. Welcome to another video. Um, reminder, if you want a lesson with me, check the link in the description. Otherwise, let's talk about today's video. A bit different today. Um, a friend of mine asked if I would make a primer, and yes, that is a proper pronunciation in this context, about mouthpiece sizing. Um, it's kind of a confusing subject, so uh, let's dive right in. So honestly, the easiest answer for almost any question you might ask me is the internet. And that's honestly how I find most of the things that I find. And the first way to check on mouthpiece sizing without having this stuff in front of you is the Dwerden, Dave Worden comparison site. I'll have the link in the description. You can check that out. And basically it has not every mouthpiece, but kind of a large number of mouthpieces listed with their inner rim diameters and like uh, you can click on that specific size and it'll show all the mouthpieces that are that size. It's pretty handy. Um, and also there's the, and this is basically how the Dave Warden site got its info, but the uh, individual mouthpiece makers have all, most of their mouthpiece specifications published in their own catalogs online. And you can go check those out. Um, and we'll talk about how accurate those are in a second, but also, you know, don't buy into like the marketing hype that's in a lot of these catalogs. Uh, the famous line being from the Bach catalog, the Teutonic sound of the Bach six and a half AL. Don't really buy into that stuff. Um, it's really easy to be like, wow, this says I'm going to sound really amazing, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, of course they're going to say that they're trying to sell you a mouthpiece. Really just look at the specs. If there's an artist attached to it that you really like, that might be something you might want to consider. Otherwise, try not to buy into the marketing hype. Now, the rub of these published sizes that the Dave Warden catalog uses and all the individual catalogs have, the websites have, is that nobody measures that specification, the inner rim diameter, kind of like the inside of the cup where it meets the rim. No one measures that in the same place. And that means that the published specifications might be accurate for that mouthpiece and whoever measured it, but will not be able to compare to another mouthpiece made by somebody else. And of course, that's a huge problem, right? Also, the rim contour, how the rim feels on the face can completely affect how large a rim can feel. If a rim is really rounded and the high point of the rim where you kind of feel it on the face is more towards the middle of the rim rather than the inside, then the rim will actually feel larger than it is. And if it's a very flat rim and the highest point on the rim is kind of towards the inside, um, actual cup diameter near the inside, then the rim is going to feel a little bit smaller. And lastly, and most importantly, no maker is completely consistent for a complete variety of reasons. Um, lots of people talk about Bach being inconsistent, which Bach completely is. And a lot of the reason for that is, one, Bach has been making mouthpieces since the 1930s or so. So they've been making mouthpieces for almost 90 years. No one's going to be consistent over 90 years, especially if you look at the last 90 years of history. Um, and just like how much they've moved, how much technology has advanced. Um, and of course, for a long time, and only until recently, Bach mouthpieces were made by hand on a lathe. And that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be inconsistent, but that means that, one, you have the human factor. Maybe a worker is uh, making a mouthpiece on Friday at 4.45, and he just wants to get it done. And it might not be the same quality, the same size as something he made on Tuesday at uh, 10 a.m., because he's got a whole work week ahead of him. Um, and also, uh, when you're making stuff by hand, this happens with CNC as well, but when you're making things by hand, the tools that you are using on the lathe to make this mouthpiece will wear out over time. And that means the mouthpieces will slowly get larger and larger and less consistent, less consistent. Um, and that's a problem. Even manufacturers like Lasky, who has passed away sadly, um, but made all of his mouthpieces with CNC. That means uh, computer controlled uh, machines that do all the machining themselves. You kind of program it all in, put a blank mouthpiece in, and then it comes out as almost a mouthpiece. Even with CNC, there's no way to make a completely accurate mouthpiece every single time. Um, every Lasky 93D that I've played has been noticeably different on the face 
even though those are made on CNC. Of course, with CNC, the, the tooling can still wear out, so there, there's nothing you can do about it, right? So now that we understand that mouthpieces are not consistent across makers, um, across the size descriptions that we have, let's dive into what we have, which is the nomenclature that these manufacturers give us. The first style of nomenclature that I'll talk about is the Bach style. I'm not sure if Bach was the first to use it, but I'm pretty sure he kind of pioneered this. Vincent Bach himself pioneered this uh, style of talking about sizes. And it's a little bit confusing, but as the mouthpiece size gets larger, um, as you move towards bass trombone mouthpieces, the number that is given for that size gets smaller. So a Bach 22D, which is a very small trombone-ish mouthpiece, even smaller than most trombone mouthpieces, is very small, 22. And the Bach 1G um, is the largest bass trombone mouthpiece that they made. So as you get larger, the, mouth, uh, the numbers get smaller. As for why Bach chose this, I really don't know, actually. Some examples of manufacturers that use this sizing um, style, obviously Bach, the uh, pioneer of the whole thing. Dennis Wick, who started on Bach mouthpieces and then eventually, of course, made his own company, makes tons of mouthpieces himself, uses the same mouthpiece uh, style. Um, and Greg Black, of course, for his uh, normal size mouthpieces, his normal line of mouthpieces, also uses the same style. Now, it's really important to add that though they may use the same style, the sizes don't necessarily have to line up exactly the same. The Dennis Wick 1 series of bass drum on mouthpieces have a totally different size, feel, everything than the Bach 1 size bass drum on mouthpiece, which have a completely different size, feel, sound than the Greg Black 1 size of bass drum on mouthpieces. So the fact that they get the numbers get smaller, the mouthpieces get larger. That's consistent, but the way that they are sized is not completely consistent. Now, the other side of the coin, and there's more size than two, of course, but the other major side of this coin is numbers go up as sizes go up, which seems kind of more like the, the way you would expect mouthpieces to be made. Um, and this is the Shilky style. I'm going to call it the Shilky style. Of course, there are probably other makers around before Shilky, Reynolds Shilky, that um, pioneered this, but Shilky is kind of the name that we have to talk about this. And, of course, this is simpler. The smaller mouthpiece is, the smaller number it has. So a very small mouthpiece, for instance, would be a Shilky 42, and a very large mouthpiece, based from one mouthpiece, about the largest they make, would be a Shilky 60. So almost everything on trombone fits in between those two numbers. And the larger the number, the larger the mouthpiece. There's a couple makers that use this kind of style. Um, I think the most obvious are obviously Shilky, the people who kind of made it really uh, the, a big way to do it, and Yamaha, who worked with Reynolds Shilky in the 1960s and 70s on a number of things. And basically ended up using the Shilky system for their own mouthpieces. Again, just like with the other style, the fact that they use the same numbers for some mouthpieces does not mean that they necessarily line up. Um, the most obvious, I think, is that the um, Yamaha 58 and the Shilky 58 are actually quite different in size. The Yamaha 58 is more like a Shilky 57 size. And the uh, Shilky, uh, Shilky 59 is rather larger than the Yamaha 59. So inconsistencies, even with the same number in the same style, inspired by the same people. On the third side of this coin, this is a really strange coin. It's got three sides so far. Um, is that the name just corresponds to the size exactly. There's, there's not just kind of like this made-up system of numbers. It's the size that you see on the mouthpiece actually refers to the inner diameter of the rim. And we have two different kinds that I can think of. I think there's probably plenty more, but there's two obvious manufacturers here. The first one is Lasky, Scott Lasky mouthpieces. Again, no longer around. Um, I think they will be coming back in some form, but right now there's no Lasky mouthpieces currently being made. 
And they're pretty simple. The number on a Lasky mouthpiece refers to the second and third digits in millimeters. It's kind of confusing, but basically a Lasky 59, for instance, Lasky 59 MD is a kind of like a large tenor trombone mouthpiece, is a 25.9 millimeter inner diameter rim. And the Lasky, for instance, 93D is a 29.3 millimeter inner diameter rim. Another example of this, um, but using the Imperial system, is Doug Elliott, who uh, measures all of his in inches. So a 104 rim from Doug Elliott is 1.04 inches um, inner diameter. A 122, for instance, I have one of those for contrabass, is a 1.22 inch inner diameter. Perhaps most confusingly of all, there's at least one maker, and there's probably more, that use both the Bach and Schilke systems for a single line of mouthpieces. Um, the example I can think of is Carl Hammond, Hammond Design Mouthpieces, where the tenor trombone series from, I think, I think he makes a 14, 14 through 10, um, as the numbers get smaller, the mouthpieces get larger, just like box, even though they're different numbers. And then for the bass trombone mouthpieces, the numbers get larger as the mouthpieces get larger from 19 to 21. So you just have to know that the tenor trombone mouthpieces are box style, the bass trombone mouthpieces are Schilke style, and none of the numbers match up to any other system at all. And lastly, we have plenty of makers that used different methods through their history of naming their mouthpieces. And I think most of these are examples of makers that um, changed hands, like the, the company was sold or was bought by a larger company like Con Selmer and had to change their nomenclature to kind of like match the larger overall company. One example is Con. They started out making their own mouthpieces. Um, for example, the Con 3, which I think came with a lot of their bass trombones. And that was just its own size. I don't even know how those really matched up or if there is even like a Con 2 or a Con 4. The Con 3 was a mouthpiece. Later, um, Con was bought by Con Selmer, kind of made into this conglomeration. And the mouthpieces changed a little bit and we got like the Con 1.5G, which obviously is in the box style, but is not exactly a Bach 1.5G size. Another example would be Olds, who, guess what, had the Olds 3 mouthpiece that came with many of their um, tenor trombones. And this is not anything close to the Con 3, which is a bass trombone mouthpiece. Totally confusing. They just had the Olds 3, um, and I'm sure there were other sizes as well. But later, Olds was bought and sold several times, and I have an Olds 12C in my mouthpiece collection that is not anything close to the um, Olds 3. And then, of course, we have Greg Black, who has a standard series of mouthpieces that uses the box style of lettering, where the mouthpiece's numbers go down as the sizes go up, but also has the Alessi slash New York series, where the numbers only correspond to that series. And let me think about it. Yes, the numbers still go down as the mouthpieces get larger, but it's a completely different number system with like decimals for depth and all this kind of stuff. So no consistency at all, except for in those in their own lines of the regular series and the New York slash Alessi series. To wrap things all up, every company has its own kind of way to do things and own, their own way to measure things, their own way of making their mouthpieces. There's no real consistency. The only consistency is your face and how they feel on your face. So try mouthpieces out. Um, don't get married to like one style of rim or a size of rim. Um, you got to play them all and you got to find what works.